My name is Esther Lucero. I am the Director of Programs and Strategic Development for the California Consortium for Indian Health. And I was about to say but, but I'm going to say and, and, because I just learned that in the leadership workshop, right? <laughs> and today, my, I'm in a very important role as um, Alliance for Girls Advisory Board member. So um, I am honored to introduce our keynote address, Teresa Younger. Ms. Younger has been on the front lines of some of the most important battles for women and girls, health, safety, and economic security. Younger was the first woman and the first African American to serve as executive director of the ACLU of Connecticut. And most recently, Younger served as the executive director of the Connecticut General Assembly's permanent commission on the status of women. In June 2014, Younger became the CEO of the Ms. Foundation, which she has described as her dream job. Younger is, a passionate, is passionate about supporting, empowering, and inspiring girls. She began her career working at a youth service organization and recently completed her role as a two-term president on the board of the Girl Scouts of Connecticut. Younger flew in from New York to be with us today. And we are so honored to have her. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce you to Teresa Younger. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me here today. Thank you to Emma for inviting me to come and to Jackie Rotman. I'm not sure where Jackie is. Thank you very much for making the introduction to all of you today. It's a real honor and a pleasure to be here. I'm gonna talk fast and I'm not gonna say everything I wanna say. And there's two reasons, because I promised Emma I would stay on time. And also because this really is my dream job. Uh, when you get to do every day what I get to do, advocating and um, empowering women throughout this country and men who believe in equality for all, it really becomes a dream job. And it quickly becomes um, even more exciting in the aspect that as I do this work, I get to meet people like all of you in this room today. And I continue to be inspired. About 11 months ago, I'm not going to say a year because it's not been a year yet, uh, I was offered a, a position that I feel like I spent my entire life getting to. And, uh, and I'd like to lay out for you a little bit about how, how I got there and what it's about. But I know for some people in this room, you're not really sure about the Ms. Foundation and what does that organization do and am I going to give you all money? Well. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't give you all money, but, <laughs> but the Ms. Foundation understands and has had a long history, 41 years of history, of understanding the collective power of women's voices, energy, money towards moving equality and making the world a better place. Um, in fact, um, we have been doing it so well across the country that we were, at the Ms. Foundation, the first women's fund in the country. We fund only domestically, and we fund about, currently about 70 organizations throughout the country in the areas of health, safety, and economic justice. But, <laughs> and, and, a, and a year ago, when I walked into the Ms. offices, and so if you're ever in Brooklyn, New York, this invitation goes. I don't say this lightly. If you are ever in Brooklyn, New York, come to the office. Um, let me know. I'm going to give you my email address at the end of the presentation. Um, let me know if you're going to be there and come to the Ms. offices. When you walk into the Ms. offices, I understand I'm, I'm a very privileged person. And I don't say that lightly. I didn't have privilege, but I am privileged at this point in my life. And when I walked into the Ms. offices, one wall actually says, igniting change, creating connections, and building strategies for stronger movements. Those are the three areas that are on the wall. And then you look just a little bit further down the wall, and it says these words. And this is why I get excited to do the work that I get to do every, every day. Our work is guided by our vision of a just and safe world where power and possibility are not limited by gender, race, class, sexual orientation, disability, or age. 
we believe that equality and inclusion are the cornerstones of a true democracy in which the worth and dignity of every person are valued. That is what I am reminded with every day when I walk into the Ms. offices. It's with those words that I join you today, and I want to thank you for the partnership that all of you have and in all the work that we do together. I oftentimes consider those who are doing the work of advocacy as my colleagues and partners in the fight. And so today, that is exactly what we are, colleagues and partners in the fight. But before I get started into some of my comments, I want to remind us of the one thing I think is most important. It's from the feminist writer and activist Audre Lorde. And she wrote these words, caring for myself is not, is not self-indulgence, it is self-preservation. It is an act of political warfare. And I remind you all of that today, because by coming here, I honestly believe you are performing an act of political warfare. Because in building our partnerships, we are building and preserving ourselves. So take the time today to make sure that you meet one person you didn't know, shake the hand of somebody you didn't know, and thank somebody. And then go into the bathroom tonight before you go to, your, go to bed and thank yourself for the work you're doing. And I just want to say thank you for being here today. When I think about the Girls' Alliance, I'm thinking of the MIM that actually uh, came up in my email box about six weeks ago, right exactly when I needed it. It said, uh, I want somebody to give me a hug and say, I know it's hard, it's going to be okay, here's a coffee and here's $5 million. <laughs> well, I, I know I nor the Alliance can't give you the $5 million, but I mean, a hug, supportive words, and a cup of coffee at least is, is what we are talking about. The idea that you've all come together to recognize the importance of networking and collaboration and sharing experiences is what builds strength in the next generation. In many ways, the Ms. Foundation started with a direct connection to women and girls and the impressions and impact that is left on them. The money that originally funded the Ms. Foundation 41 years ago came from the proceeds of the Free to Be You and Me work a collection of stories and songs, for some of you who might not be familiar with it, that inspired boys and girls to be whoever they wanted to be, free of gender stereotypes. That first grant that the Ms. Foundation made was towards domestic violence, before anybody was funding domestic violence work. We understood back then what we understand now, the impact by, of, the, of the work that we do and the impact of those dollars on each generation that moves forward. The Ms. Foundation, as many of you may be aware, was also the founder of Take Our Daughters to Work Day. It was not Take Your Daughter to Work Day, it was Take Our Daughters to Work Day. It was the idea that collectively we had an obligation and a responsibility to not just who we were raising in our households, but to the community of women and girls that were around us. That was one of the most uh, amazing culture changes that ever took place. Um, we did it at a time when women's opportunities in the paid workforce were much more limited than they are today. And working under the assumption that if you can see it, you can be it, we thought taking girls into offices would make a lot of sense. But back then, while it helped girls learn about their job options, it also shined a light on what we knew to be true, which was there were limited, work experiences for women, and how those women were marginalized and mostly excluded from positions of power. Having girls go to work with their par parents opened the eyes for everybody, and we all started asking those tough questions. So where are the women? For me, this work of Take Your Daughters to Work Day didn't really affect me, uh, not because it wasn't important, but my father was in the military. And my father used to say to me, he was in the Air Force, if the military wanted you to have a family, they would have issued you one. <laughs> so needless to say, um, there were very few, very few uh, women 
doing the work that he was doing, and there was no way the commander was going to let us into, into his workspace. However, the importance of that movement, the importance of that culture change, which now is take your sons and daughters to work day, um, 25 plus years later, it's been so instrumental that we actually have been bouncing around in our office the ideas of bring your parents to work day and reversing it so that parents can actually see the dynamic opportunities that have been opened up for boys and girls across the country. So watch for that campaign at some point soon. <laughs> I, uh, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about how I got to where I am uh, today. Uh, I'm a lifelong Girl Scout. I say it proudly, I say it often. My father was in the military and everywhere we moved, the only thing that I had of consistency in my life was Girl Scouting. I often found myself in communities where nobody even looked like me. And in fact, until I was 20 years old, I thought the darkest shade of makeup was suntan. <laughs> I'm familiar with with one thing that I could always count on. No matter where I lived, there was always Girl Scouting. So Girl Scouting gave me a network of sisterhood, a place where women were always called and seen as leaders. We shared values. They taught me skill sets that I still use today. They introduced me to what I consider the first level of everyday feminist, women who were working to empower me and other girls and young women to make the world a better place, to see the world not just as it was, but how we understood it to be and how we could change it. It instilled in me the importance of giving back to my community, of not just identifying problems, but proposing solutions, and the confidence to believe that my voice and my views were valid. I was given the opportunity to lead a youth development organization based on the experiences that I had had in Girl Scouting, to engage children in urban environments, both in the summer months and throughout the school year. Girl Scouting prepared me well for many of the challenges I would see. However, it should be explained that I grew up in North Dakota. We don't have urban in North Dakota. <laughs> so the idea of starting a nonprofit that was working with children living in urban environments, and I use my words very carefully there, um, was a brand new experience. And I wish, I so wish, we had a girls alliance when I was doing that work. <laughs> because it was there that I was exposed to the idea that each and every day, in each and every interaction that you and I do, we are impacting the lives of those around us. We are having a moment in time. Giving kids a safe haven at Maury's camp to be themselves, to be children, to be children, was something that was just not so seen in their lives. Giving them access to a fun and enriching programs, learning how to swim, how to sit at a campfire, how to enjoy the peace and quiet, just how to sit and how to be children, was one of the most rewarding experiences in my lifetime. And I loved it, but it was obvious, it was also one of the most pivotal moments I had ever experienced. I ran that program for five years before I transitioned out, but year three, I had a 12 year old who showed up in my program pregnant. I thought I was doing all the right stuff. I had partnered with the schools, I had partnered with the parents, I had talked to the children, we had a bonding experience, and your heart drops. When the, on day three, the young woman who was too sick to get out of bed gets taken to the doctors and the doctor tells me and calls me and tells me that she's pregnant and how do we want to handle this 127 miles from her mother? So I called the mother up and I, you know, said to the mother, you know, your daughter, Nikisha, is pregnant and the mother said these three things to me, and it has stuck with me to this day because it, it was at that moment that I decided I was going to change the work that I was doing. The mother said this to me, well, she must have got pregnant at camp. And I said, well, she's three months pregnant, and she's been at camp for three days. <laughs> now, mind you, I was 26, so, you know, I was still trying to figure this all out myself. <laughs> then the mother said to me, well, you know, she doesn't even have a boyfriend. And I said, you know, that really doesn't matter. 
And then she said to me something that I it, it just really kind of struck me. She said, I don't think she's even had her period. And I said, well, she did, because I called you two years ago to tell you about it. What that experience did for me, and what I think it does for many of us who are in servicing our communities, right, is enlightens us on what is happening in the households on a daily basis. There was no comprehensive sex education. This young woman was trying to figure out her life and the connections she was making without the supports, even though her mother thought she had them, that she really needed. It was at that moment that I decided I needed to stop figuring out why, the, why I needed to stop pulling the babies out of the water and understand what the policies were that was getting them in the water. The lack of comprehensive sex education, the lack of after-school programming, the lack of making sure that actual parenting courses were going on, the appropriate supports that needed to take place, access to comprehensive health care as a full, were all things that I understood in my core needed to happen. And it was at that moment, it was at that moment that I decided I was going to leave Maury's Camp, the organization I had started and founded, to go and do public policy work. Nearly 20 years later, Maury's camp is still functioning. The thing, the thing we have to realize is that we have to be true to ourselves as we do this work, and we have to grow with it as it grows. Those days at Maury's camp were some of my toughest. I did that work for five years. And having, uh, and yet they were some of the most fulfilling. I will tell you, I see young people, and I'm sure you all have had this happen too, when you walk through the mall and somebody calls out your name, they say things like, hey, Miss Teresa, you look exactly the same. <laughs> Except for those crow's feet right there. <laughs> and I turn and I like flip in my head frantically for who this child is, right? Um, I have to tell you, I have a hard time placing people just in general. If I see my husband in the grocery store, I don't know it's him because he's not in the right spot. So uh, in it, um, take it with a grain of salt. But I, I think you know, that, that moment for me was instrumental in the work that I have decided to take on in my life. It was about speaking truth to power because when I pulled the children in my program, I found that 50% that, that of 12-year-olds were sexually active. It changed how I was thinking I was giving children a place to be children and acknowledged the environments that they were growing up with. It also allowed us to empower those young people to own their, them, their bodies themselves and advocate for themselves. Fast forward, fast forward. Um, the work that we did at Maury's camp was outstanding and I take great pride in that work. Um, I, embarked on a path that led, me to Maury, to, that led me to the Ms. Foundation, the idea that we needed somebody who was going to be advocating and empowering women and girls. And along with our grantee partners, I have been able to do that. The Ms. Foundation has about 70 grantees. And every day I learn a fact that just about, it just enlightens me a little bit more and actually inspires me to do the work. So I was not surprised informed by the data that, uh, that you all have put together, recognizing that um, girls' enrollment in, in computer education courses had dropped 77% in the past 10 years, understanding that only 58% of African-American girls and young women in, the, in Oakland graduate from high school knowing that San Francisco, the San Francisco Bay Area is, only, is one of 10 of the worst child sex trafficked areas in the United States, with a majority of those children being trafficked, children are, children are girls. These are daunting, and they make me shake my head, and they make me question what's going on, but they also make me understand that we have work to do. We can't get tired, we don't get to get burned out, because we have to do the work that we are doing. And we have to continue to plow forward in that work that we are doing. And the reason I stay inspired in the work that I'm doing is because I get to meet people like you. A year ago when I started with the Ms. Foundation, I decided that I would go on a listening tour. That listening tour took me to 35 cities in nine months, about 20,000 miles. That will get you tired. 
But it didn't, because in each and every stop, I had an opportunity to hear what was going on within that community and how they were not just pointing out the problems, but pointing out the solutions, right? The two speakers, the two young women we had up here tonight, weren't they amazing? In pointing out the solution. And recognizing each step of the way that we have more to do and that we have, we have to just reach forward and do it. On that listening tour, I learned two important things um, that I think are relevant today. Um, I learned a lot of things, but two that I think are most relevant today. One, feminism is alive and well. Feminism, the social, political, and economic fight for all genders is alive and well. And secondly, people want to be part of a movement. People want, we have to just give them an opportunity. So while we think we are in it alone, all we have to do is open the door and invite people in. And that is the importance of this alliance in and of itself. As I traveled around the country, I met with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. It was everything from our grantees to youth-serving organizations. As I heard their stories, I found myself hearing, understanding, and appreciating what was going on. When I stopped in New Mexico, I sat uh, for three hours with an executive director. And I know most of you don't have three hours in any given day, but I sat for three hours with the executive director of Young Women United, who had been working on organizing uh, communities of young women of color with, throughout New Mexico. I was fortunate enough to drive with her from Albuquerque, New Mexico, to Roswell, New Mexico. Um, to put it in perspective, tomorrow I'm driving from here to Visalia. Same distance, same kind of landscape, same. Um, and in that drive, I learned and heard about why Tanya loved the work she was doing, what empowered her, why she, um, uh, why she got up every single day to do the work she was doing, and, and how she was moving legislation forward to ensure that the parents, young parents in New Mexico had access to basically a paid family leave for high school students. And we weren't criticizing those students for getting pregnant, but rather empowering them to have a voice to make sure that they could continue their education. Um, she told me all about the challenges of, rural, of organizing in rural communities, and she explained to me how she and her limited staff, limited staff like all of you, were able to actually pass legislation that made it, uh, made it okay for young parents to be parents and con continue their education. When we arrived in Roswell, we were, I was joined by a group of of um, high school students, children, and school board members for the first anniversary of the passage of this, this piece of legislation. And I was a little impatient as we were waiting to get started and in rushed a, a, a young woman with a three-year-old on her hip. And uh, she looked around and she apologized for being late and she thanked the crowd for being there and she pulled out a piece of paper and her hand shook because public speaking can be one of the toughest things you do. Um, and she, um, apologized for being late, and then she told us what a wonderful year she had had. She had graduated from high school, she had married um, the father of her child, and she had started college. In fact, the reason she was late because, was because that day was her first day of college. And she had felt it was so important to pick up her son before she got to the event so that he could be part of the celebration that she had organized. You see, Three years ago, when she was pregnant and told that she wouldn't graduate on time, she decided to organize her community and her uh, school and got them together to recognize that they needed to create a leave program for everybody. That leave program allowed them to um, then move that legislation to the state level. And she went up and testified at the, on the state level for that legislation and organized within communities throughout her her, uh, her state. It was amazing. That young woman, that one young woman was empowered. And she changed the course, not only the course of her life, but she also helped other young women throughout the state of New Mexico. And in fact, every single day, that is exactly what you all are doing. You're doing it in your own ways. You are actually empowering the lives of the young women that are around you. I understand on a, on a daily basis that I stand on the shoulders of giants, those that came before me, those that are doing the work on the ground. That privilege does not leave me at any level. I know that I sit in the shades of trees that I did not plant. 
and I walk down paths that I did not pave, and I drink from wells that I did not drill. Everyone in this room is planting trees for the next generation to sit in shade. We are all paving paths so that girls can walk down the journeys of their lives to success. And we will continue to build new wells so that we all have something to drink. Our work is hard sometimes. So I just want to take a moment to thank you for transforming the lives of the young women that you are working with. Thank you for envisioning a world where girls' are worth is determined by her mind, sp mind and spirit, her, and her body is safe, a source of joy, and that her sky is the limit. With the continued effort and your commitment girl, to girls' empowerment, we will continue to overcome barriers, we will build more wells, and we will lead to a greater movement of equality. And I just want to leave you with this one statement. Be the kind of woman that influences other young women, that when they put their feet on the ground in the morning, the devil says, oh crap, she's up. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>